Hey everybody, Brian here from Working Class Fishing. Today we're going to go into the garage and we're going to check out how to build some spinners. We're using a Paulson Cascade Tackle Twist Tech today. So if you want to check out how to make some spinners with a wire former, make sure you stay tuned. Alright, so just an overview of what I am using today. This is what is called a Twist Tech. It is a wire former. It's manufactured by Paulson Cascade Tackle. And the way that it works is, is that we can form an eye or a bend in some wire by placing it over these posts here. So there's a post here and there's a second post and this works its way around. Now if you look real close here you'll notice that there's a groove there and the wire tail actually locks into that groove and we're going to look in a minute and you're going to see how that all works. But basically we form with that groove and we have a very specific position where we go. We can form with that. Once we have a loop established, then we come over here to the other side and we can place that loop through this groove here. And then we place this through that eye formed. We can twist it and it puts the twist in the loop, basically forming our spinner shaft. And that's what we're looking at is the, uh, the ability to form our spinner shaft. So this device is going to do that for us. So before we get into making spinners, I want to talk about a few of the different types of spinners we have out there. Now, predominantly what I use is going to either be a torpedo body, a bell body, or a trolling spinner. And I have examples of all three of those here. So first one I'm going to go over, and it's probably a fairly common one for most of you to see, is what we call the bell body spinner. This one here is what they call a bell body. It's got a little ringer on the inside of it. And this ringer on the inside, uh, it consists of a brass ferrule, there's a bead, and then there's also the little ringer here that's a, um, basically, we would call it a, a brooch or a hobbed piece of brass. And then up here we have a bearing for our blade to ride on, and we put what we call a French blade on this. Now these components come from R&B Lure Company, and R&B is a local company to myself, Rob makes some absolutely fantastic spinner parts. They're real heavy, they sink fast, they really thrash through the water. Got a lot of fish with these. So very good spinner components, but this is a bell body component here. And obviously you can get these in any multitude of different colors. Uh, so th definitely cater it to your water conditions. The next one I'm gonna show you is a torpedo body. And the torpedo body spinner is just like this. It's basically a weighted body with a bead here as a bearing and a blade and what we call a clevis here. So these are very basic and they just basically make sound and water movement and they attract fish. I'll actually put a clip up of catching a fish with this exact spinner here. Uh, the trout love them, salmon love them, steelhead love them. I've got bass with these. I've gotten all kinds of different fish that are real predatory that like to attack something shiny and flashy. The last type is that trolling spinner. I actually have a little better example of a trolling spinner than what I was originally going to show you. This one's set up a little bit different. Now, typically we wouldn't have a split ring down here, but I put a split ring on here because I was actually casting this one. But what I did was I set up two spinner blades on it to add a little bit more traction just to try something a little different. Not very much luck with this setup here. But uh, this one here, you'll notice that these blades are a little bit different and these blades here are what we call Colorado blades. We'll kind of talk about the different blade styles here in a second. But this one is meant to be trolled behind your boat or trolled behind your kayak or your canoe or something else. And it's just basically making an attracting flash and creating some water movement itself too. So a lot of different varieties of different types of spinners. The Twist Tech, the, what I showed you in the first segment, is very, very good at making all of these different types of wire shafts. And the cool part is, is that then you can customize your spinners. Obviously this one here, it's set up with T-beads. It's got this smaller bead down here at the bottom. Uh, these work really well. And, and you'll see a lot of different people that use these types of spinners, like a three and a half inch type spinner. And they'll use the T-bead uh, like what these ones are, or they'll use uh, little round beads. Now that's not to say that every type of spinner is going to be on a wire shaft. You can also have spinners that are rigged up on monofilament or fluorocarbon, such as ones called wedding rings uh, uh, or the ones with the bow tie blades. There's a bunch of different ways. You can even rig those Colorado blades or there's also very, very large willow blades that can be rigged on there too for trolling 
large fish. And so you have a lot of different options. Now, obviously, willow leaf blades are also used on uh, spinner baits and, and some of those other bass baits where you want to have that additional action or you want to have a little bit different presentation in the water. But we're going to focus on inline spinners because inline spinners is what I use a lot of. And this device, this twist tech, does a really good job with those inline spinners. So let's turn back over to the twist tech and let's talk and let's make a couple spinner shafts and see what we can do. Okay, first things first with this. So the twist tech is set up in such a way that you have to position your handle in the correct location. And the way that I remember that is wherever it's easiest for me to place the wire into the former so that it catches between those two points. So we have two roll pins here, and these roll pins are placed into this piece of aluminum, which is then connected down here to this lower frame. It's a really cool setup. You'll notice that I have this screwed into a wood block. The cool part of this is, is that I can take spinner components out on the river and let's say fishing slow, I'm just running some bait or I'm anchor fishing or something else. I can set this up in my boat up on either the bow or back at the stern at the rear casting stanchion or something. And I can make spinners as I'm hanging out. So I'm, I'm doing something kind of hanging out and I'm waiting for the rod tip to dive into the water. Hopefully that's what we always hope for. But I have this mounted to a wood block. This is just a really cheap fabrication table. This table here, I have a, a C clamp, a single C clamp that I use to hold that down. And the reason why I use a bar clamp or a C clamp is that uh, it holds really well. The threads are going to pull down really tight and you're going to be applying a lot of force. Even though we have a diameter of wire that's 0 0.030, it's roughly a 32nd of an inch in diameter. It is stainless steel. It's very hard wire. So it's going to take a little bit more force and umph. And so I have this table anchored down with about 100 pounds of chain. And so that way it doesn't move around too much as we do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you a couple different things here that I've done. So in the instructions with this twist deck, it says to leave roughly a half inch of a tail protruding past the end of this bend part here. Now, you could leave more, you could leave less, but you really don't need to leave a whole bunch there because it just ends up being waste. But what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to construct a torpedo body spinner, just like this one here. So I'm going to start out by forming this upper eye first, because we basically assemble this in reverse, uh, so to speak. So we want to build our first eye. Then we're going to take our clevis and our blade. We're going to put that on here. Then we're going to take a bead and then we're going to take the, the actual body and we're going to put that on. And then we're going to put the remaining part back in here, form this side, twist it up. And then we're going to go ahead and put a single point side wash hook on that. Uh, now, if we wanted to make hooks interchangeable, we could also use split rings. But we're just going to go ahead and use the side wash hook. That way uh, we can always take this off. We can add a split ring later and put trebles on if we wanted to. Um, but for the conditions in the rivers around here, especially with casting spinners such as these, I like to stick to that single point. So I have a mark on this wood block here. If you take a look at it really close, it, it is a half inch mark. So when I set the wire there, I can just kind of get an idea of how far past I need to put that. It doesn't have to be exact rocket science, but we're going to leave about that much of that tail sticking out. What I'm going to do is... Now I have pressure applied to it, and you're going to see that I'm going to go ahead and twist this around all the way until you can see I came in contact with that other wire. I don't want to go any further than that, though, because I want to maintain the integrity of the shaft. Now you can see that I have a loop started. If you look at the offset, it kicks off a little bit. And on this die down here where this actually locks in, there's a slot here that kicks off at that exact angle. So this is already fairly precise in the angle that it utilizes. What I'm going to do is I like to just hook that on to that little J hook first. And then I'm going to go ahead and put tension on this. I'm going to just go ahead and use up all of that. 
Okay. And so if I notice that, you know, my alignment of my eyes off a little bit or something like that, I can always go back with a set of pliers and I can straighten that out later. So once we have that part on there, and I'll probably end up straightening this out at some point in time. It doesn't take a whole heck of a lot, but it definitely, uh, you can, you can, you would want to have that a little bit straighter on there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spinner components themselves. And the first thing to go on is your blade. So this is a number four French blade. Uh, it, it's a, a silver plated blade, basically. Uh, it's a real popular uh, color uh, or, or combination of a blade this time of year. So I'm going to go ahead and just build the good old classic number four torpedo spinner here. So I'm putting this blade on and you'll notice that I'm putting the cup side of the blade towards the eye. You always want to do that because when it's traveling through the water, you're going to want the hydraulics of the water whipping that blade and that little dish in the bottom is going to help lift that blade, which is going to create the spin and the turbulence and it's going to displace the water. So we want to do that. So right there we have the clevis. The clevis is this little part here. Some people call it the stirrup. And these come in different sizes for different blades. You're going to look at the different ones. You don't want to put a number four clevis on a number one blade. So depending on your blade size, you're going to want to select the right size clevis for that. So once we do that, then we have to put a bearing. Otherwise, this will hang up against the top of the body here. So even though these are nice, smooth, clean, we still need to actually um, put a bearing in there. And so we can use uh, uh, a bead, any color, really. And so if you want to use a bead, you can use uh, brass beads or uh, nickel beads or, you know, even uh, colored beads. Just basically something to get that to where it's not going to ride against that body. So we're going to go ahead and thread this bead on here. So that bead goes on next. And then we're going to go ahead and put that body on there just like that. Okay. So once we have that body on there, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and form that lower eye on that spinner. When we form the lower eye on the spinner, we're going to want to give ourselves enough space that when we twist it, it's not going to crush this clevis, but we're also going to have enough room to swing around when this comes back around. And we're also going to have enough room when we twist the eye with this that it's not going to hang up and we don't have to cut the lure out of there. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a pretty decent spacing, but I'm not going to give it a whole bunch. And this is something that comes with practice and time. There's, I know that there's some guys out there that are like, it, it has to be 4.427 inches exactly on the spot. That's just a random number I pulled out of the, my hat. That's fine for them. For me, I eyeball it because I catch the fish on them anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and twist that around. And that looks about appropriate. So now you see we formed our second eye. We're going to come over here again to the, the, the twister and go ahead and give this a couple good cranks, two, three. And some people only go one, some people go two. I like to go a couple good cranks on it just because it seems to work out really well. And we form that lower eye. Then make sure you have a good set of wire cutters. This is a set of channel locks that I've had forever, but no problem with that. And basically what we've done is we have built a torpedo body spinner. Now, if we wanted to, we could add a split ring down here to the bottom. And that way we could change out treble hooks. I'm just going to go ahead and put a sidewash hook on here. And I have little grippers on the inside here. Whenever you have an open eye hook, make sure that you crimp that eye shut. Because it really suck if you cast it out there and your hook comes off. And there you have it. This is about as basic as basic gets as far as a spinner. So you're probably curious, do these spinners actually work? Well, here's a short clip for you to check out 
you might be surprised at the results. All right, we're gonna start out over here. There's already fish. We're just gonna play around. I don't know what kind of bird that was, but man, I wish I could see it. Throwing that pink spinner out there. Let's just see if we get hammered. Yep, hammered right out of the gate. Look at that, guys. First cast. Check him out. Right on. These guys are aggressive and hungry. All right. Get a good look at them here. Yep, we're in the waders. Thanks everybody for tuning in again. We really appreciate all the new subs out there, all of our support from Instagram and YouTube. If you'd like, please tell your friends about us too. Make sure if you're new to this channel that you subscribe, like, and comment on any of our videos. Feel free to shoot us a line too. We really appreciate any of the input that any of our viewers have put in. We're willing to try new things all the time. We like to get out and fish. We like to talk fishing. So if you have something interesting you want to talk about, make sure to shoot us a line. Until next time, 